Hello everyone, uh, welcome to AWS Tutorials. In AWS Tutorials, we provide workshops and exercises to learn about AWS services. These workshops and exercises are published to our website aws-dozo.com. Many of my audiences uh, ask about uh, making a video uh, and workshop about using AWS IoT Job. So here I am uh, not talking about AWS IoT Job. So what exactly is AWS IoT Job? When you are working on an IoT uh, deployment and you have devices which are connected to AWS IoT Core, uh, you have to perform various types of uh, management and update on the device. Uh, it could be as simple as changing some configuration file or rotating the certificate uh, or even rebooting the rebooting the uh, device or it could be you know, as complex as you know, uh, deploying a new version of the application on your device or update the firmware on the device. And whenever you have these kind of management tasks to be performed, you use AWS IoT job. So in very short summary, AWS IoT device management uses AWS IoT job to perform remote operations on uh, the devices in order to manage them, in order to update them. So in this tutorials, we are going to understand the fundamentals of AWS IoT job. And to be honest, there's, there's a lot to study, but my purpose today is to give you at least uh, you know, the understanding of the most fundamental things about running a job uh, uh, on a devices so that you can kick start in this topic. And then of course you can use AWS documentation to further build your knowledge about it. So let's get it started. Uh, yeah, it's really a very interesting topic. So when you're talking about AWS IoT job where you have some device which needs to perform Sorry, some device on which your IoT device management wants to perform some kind of update. In order to run this update, uh, you use uh, a job file. And you can say job file is kind of um, a handshake or agreement between device management and device. So your device management does not perform the actual operation, but it actually creates a job file which has set of configuration, set of instructions, which device has to follow, which device has to uh, execute to, um, to perform the update. So the job file is nothing more than a configuration file. It's a JSON based file, but then device has a business logic, device has a code running, which understand the structure of the job file. And based on the structure of the job file, it will perform certain uh, operations uh, on, on the device uh, to, uh, to, uh, to update it. And if it is not making much sense, uh, yeah, just hold for a second. I'm going to show you a couple of examples which will make it, make it uh, much clearer to you. But let's understand what is the flow, uh, flow of uh, communication between AWS IoT device management and device if device management uh, wants to update um, wants to update uh, something on the device. So the first thing, of course, is you need to have a job file which uh, is created by AWS Device Management. But the device understands uh, the structure of the file, and it also understands how to use the instruction in the file to perform certain operations. So the flow is that first. AWS IoT device management will configure the job. So here uh, it will create, a, you know, you will create a JSON file, which is a, a job file, which will be where you put down the, uh, the attributes, the instructions, which you want your device to follow to perform certain tasks, a certain update. Then IoT device management will publish this job. So it will configure the job and submit it or publish it. And when you do that, uh, actually, Device management will receive or subscribe the job. Device management will receive or subscribe the job. And uh, once it has received the job, it will start processing the job. Again, guys, uh, here I want to give uh, emphasis again that actually device management is not performing, is not running any remote code on your device. Device has a local code which it is running to do the update. 
So device management is responsible for creating this job file and pushing it to the device. And then device will have a local business logic code running, which will simply process the job, which will simply perform the update depending on the instruction given in the file. Again, I will show you a couple of examples, uh, but uh, that will make uh, you understand this. The simple term, your uh, device management will configure the job, publish the job, devices will receive the job, they subscribe to the job, they receive the job file, and then they will process the job uh, depending on the job file. When the devices are um, processing the job, actually they keep sending updates. So they are, because the job could be as simple as download the file, or it could be like, uh, okay, um, uh, update the firmware, uh, no, change the configuration file. It can do um, complex things as well. Uh, so when you're doing so, your device might want to send the update in terms of, okay, I'm in progress, I have succeeded, I have failed, yeah, I'm healthy, uh, things like that. So device is responsible for sending the updates back to the device management. And when they send the update back, actually in the device management job console, you can see the updates coming from the device. So by looking at the device management job console, uh, you can know uh, the status of the job. Uh, on the device, whether it has initiated, uh, or it is still in queue, or it has it is in progress, it has failed, it has completed, all those status you can come to know in device management console because your device are uh, device keeps sending uh, the status update. And once the job has been finished, once the device says that okay, job has completed or job has failed, it could be either way. Uh, in that case, it will simply mark. Uh, no, in the device management, the job will be marked as completed or uh, failed. So that's how this whole uh, communication works between uh, the device and the AWS IoT device management. Now, the key here is the job file because uh, depending on the configuration of the job file, device has to process the job. There is no fixed schema for the job file. It's not that each job file has to have following five attributes and ten instructions to get the job done. As long as it is a valid JSON document and it has certain configuration, yeah, you are good. So you are free. You are free to define the schema the way you want. And then uh, it is important the device understand the schema of your job and depending on what configuration has been sent to device uh, in the job file, device should have a local business logic running, a local code running, say in Python or other programming language to, to update the device as per instructions provided in the job file. So let's take a couple of examples and then it will uh, further help you understand uh, the role of the job file. So let's take example that you have uh, uh, IoT device element and then device and here is the job file. All this job file is saying that um, I have one field called file and it has some file location. Yeah, this is my job file. And this is something which device management has published to the device. And then device has a simple a simple uh, business logic which says that, okay, just download the file. Yeah? So update could be when the job file is submitted, device will run a local code and simply uh, download this file. That's it. Yeah? It could be as simple as that. Or it could be download the file and execute it. Probably you're sending some kind of executable, some kind of uh, patch, some kind of um, yeah, uh, uh, software package on the device, and you want device to download and execute it. Again, you can see here that none of these things, whether to download or download and execute, is written over here. All it is saying that, okay, I'm, I have a job file where I'm simply providing a file location. And then it is the business logic at the device side, which is going to either download or download and execute. So your device and your device management both should have an agreement that when you send me a job file, how do I build a business logic to process that job file? That business logic is at the device side. Okay. Let's take another example. Suppose this is the uh, this is another yeah, again I said job file has no schema, so I can build anything. Here is another example. It's saying that, okay, this is my job file. Version is 1.1. Old config file is old config addition. Some new config file in some old location or some, some file location. Update patch in some file location. 
Now, here the device says, okay, fine, as per the agreement, this is how I'm going to process this file. So first, I will run this job only when my local deployed version is less than 1.1. In fact, it's less than equal to 1.1, okay? So I will run this job only when my version is prior to the version shared in the job file. That was the business logic uh, no, point number one. Second is, oh, you send me the old config, so I'm going to remove this old config from the device. Yeah? My code will do that job. Third, I'm going, to, I'm going to download this new config from this new config uh, uh, field, yeah? from this file location. And finally, I'm going to download the patch file, okay? And patch is kind of a software package I want to run, and then I'm going to execute the patch file. So the device can have this kind of business logic as well. Now, again, uh, iterating it again, that what business logic you run here, depending on the job file configuration, is the agreement between your device and the device management. So device management is responsible to configure this job file, push it to the device, and then device is responsible for receiving this job file and then running a set of, uh, set of uh, code to process this job file depending on what agreement device and device management have. Hopefully this is two example help you understand the role of the job file and what part job device management does and what part the device does. Now, when you are creating a job file, uh, your job file might need various resources. If you look, if you look at the example above, uh, my one resource is this new config file, this job file, uh, no, some file location, uh, or my update patch software package, that again in some file location. So where do I keep these resources? Because device needs some location from where it can download these resources. And that's where your Amazon S3 comes into the picture. So for instance, um, the job file itself is stored in the Amazon S3 instance, okay? So when you are, uh, when your AWS device management uh, configures a job, the job, uh, the job file has to be created and it has to be stored into Amazon S3. Then job file might have some other dependency, like I showed you earlier, the config files, the, the software uh, patch, uh, and those kind of things. Those are also, those can also be stored on Amazon S3 uh, bucket. So you can have, and when you do so actually, for instance, giving, uh, coming back to the previous example, suppose you're creating, uh, 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 you're, 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 using, you're sending the update patch. Now this update, update patch, you can configure like this. So you can say that, okay, in my, as in my say, uh, some region, say Ireland region, uh, yeah, uh, Ireland region in, in S3, I, am I have a bucket like this. Then I have in that under the bucket, I have a folder like this. And this is the key name for my, uh, say, uh, a patch software, okay? So you can, you can provide location like this for your resources. And what exactly happens is that when you submit the job, actually, it will create a pre-signed URL because, you know, this, this bucket is private. Device cannot simply go and access it. So in order to uh, help device access it, actually what device management does, once you put uh, a placeholder like this for your uh, for your resources, it will create a pre-signed URL uh, for this bucket, and it will embed that into this embed that into this uh, this location. So this location will be replaced by a pre-signed URL, so that device can simply call that pre-signed URL and can download the resources. Yeah, so as simple as that. And this pre-signed URL you can configure uh, for uh, for certain duration. So you can say that okay, this uh, resource is available only for next five minutes, ten minutes, two hours, like that. So for that long, device can download this file, and after that, this pre-signed URL is not valid anymore. So you can really uh, put your resources uh, along with your job file into your uh, S3 bucket and then can provide location like this into your job file. And then when the job is submitted, and then when this file goes all the way to device, this part will be replaced by a pre-signed URL. Uh, and that pre-signed URL will be then used by device to download the resources. Yeah, so this is again a very 
interesting thing to know that how do I embed, how do I put location of my resources inside my job file. So moving on, how do these guys communicate? Because uh, we talked about that, okay, I, I, IoT device management uh, publishes the job file, uh, then device will um, receive the job file, and then device will send the update back. How does this communication uh, happen? There are two methods for such communication. You can use MQTT or you can use API call as well. Both are both are supported. And I'm going to give an example of MQTT because that is the most popular uh, method used for such uh, communication. So what happens is that when you when you in, in your device will be running a code which is looking which is subscribed to this particular topic. So this is kind of a, uh, a fixed topic which is like AWS things. This is a device name. So, so when the device has been registered to the AWS IoT core, uh, you, you, uh, yeah, you have a device name. This is a device name. Then jobs and notify next. Next. So this device will subscribe to this particular topic. So whenever a job is published by device management, and 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 device management says, okay, I'm publishing it for this particular device or set of devices. This device will get notified because it has subscribed to this uh, this uh, particular topic. So it will get notified. And uh, when it handles the notification, actually uh, the job file is provided to the device. So device receives the job file. So very simple, your device subscribes to this particular topic. And whenever the job is published, uh, it gets notified about the job. And uh, uh, when it handles the notification, you get the job, uh, you get the job uh, file, the whole configuration of the job file. Now, in order to put the status back, because when I'm uh, processing that, uh, when I'm processing the, uh, when I'm processing uh, devices, processing the job file, it will go through various stages. And if it wants to publish back uh, the status, uh, then it uses uh, the other topic. So it simply publishes the status back to this particular topic. Again, in this topic, uh, you have got AWS things. This is the thing name, the thing name for the device jobs and then job id now when uh, when aws iot device management publishes the job it creates a job id okay it puts a job id into a job and that job id uh, is is sent along with the job file so when a device receives the job by subscribing to this topic it will have a job id so device has to extract out that job id and then it can construct uh, it can construct uh, a topic like this using the thing name and and uh, job id and then there it can publish the status when it publishes status to this job this uh, this thing, this topic over here aws device uh, iot device management receives the update and it will update uh, the status in the uh, job console Okay, so again, it uses MQTT based communication uh, for device and uh, device management uh, to receive the job file and also update about the job status. You can also use API call, but that I'm not uh, covering today, but you can go through the AWS documentation to learn about using API call uh, to receive a job and also publish the status of the job. So moving on. So as I mentioned that you can, Use this particular topic to uh, no, device can use this particular topic to publish data back. So, what are the status you can send back? I mean, there are a number of status, but three most important status device sends back. One is it is in progress, so you receive the job, and then say, you know what, it is in progress, uh, and then if you have if the device has uh, successfully processed the job, it can send the succeed message. If any error has come, it can send the fail message. So you can send uh, many other status uh, other than these three, but these three are the most important status this device should send is that I am in progress, I have succeeded, and I have failed so that the device management knows uh, to the job console that these devices are in which uh, status uh, in, in terms of processing the job. So moving on. Um, how, so when you say um, your device management is uh, actually uh, sending that uh, job to device, so how does it select a target? So which device to send the job? Because you might have thousands of thousands of devices. You might have different types of devices. 
but you might want to segregate your uh, yeah, you might want to send different updates to different devices different devices or you might want to do your device updates in patches so how do i how does how does device management select which devices or device or devices to uh, update the job uh, so there are two choices very simple one uh, it can select a single device uh, so it can select uh, individual devices you can say okay uh, this this the, i mean it can really in the console go and select uh, more than one devices say these devices i want to send the update for the job or you can also create a device group and send uh, send the update for a device group in that case all the devices in the device group and uh, group and get the get the uh, job update okay so you can again select target based on individual uh, single devices like you can select more than one single devices or you can also publish it to device group now there are two types of job which is very important for you to understand so even when you're configuring your job you can configure your job with two types one is called snapshot job which is a one time job so for instance one time job is like okay i just run the job i i just like it device management said hey this is the update i want i publish the update in the job and device will simply run it once job done yeah so it run one time job then there are continuous job and continuous job are interesting that when you are submitting the continuous job the existing devices has to run and then that's it but if some new devices are joining the target so for instance you selected um, uh, some device group uh, for executing the job uh, and uh, there are five devices okay so those five devices will do say one time job processing and done and then suddenly like two days uh, after you have processed the job a sixth device joined the group device group in that case that sixth device will automatically run this job so the continuous jobs are which are uh, like um, uh, executed as uh, as 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 one time job for all the devices which are already already there but if new devices join in the future then those devices automatically is to this job as long as they are in the target group okay so these two types of job you can configure so keeping all these uh, fundamentals in mind we are going to do one workshop today uh, which will uh, give you an experience of actually configuring your own job submitting it to device and then device processing it so what we are doing going to do here is that we are going to use an aws uh, uh, aws cloud 9 environment as a device simulator where we we'll use a python code um, uh, to do device part of the coding and then it will use mqtt messages to talk to aws iot core which will further talk to aws iot device management iot device management will create device jobs these device jobs this job files uh, the main job files the other resources they all will be published to uh, this s3 s3 bucket so it will submit the job and then we'll see that it when submit the job your device will uh, receive the job and then it will process the job process the job depending on the configuration in the job file so this is the scenario we are going to build in order to build the scenario we have created a workshop uh, this workshop has been published to a website aws-dozo.com uh, the url of the workshop is also provided in the description box uh, below Uh, and you can simply uh, follow the instructions uh, in the workshops to complete uh, this uh, uh, this uh, scenario uh, now i'm going to take you to the uh, workshop uh, instructions to walk you through the steps and explain how it is working uh, and after that you can actually simply uh, click on this uh, url and then you can run this uh, workshop by your own in your own aws environment uh, yeah whenever you have time and when you feel like doing so okay so without wasting any more time let's jump to this uh, workshop so here is our work uh, work uh, workshop which is published to website aws-dozo.com uh, we have already talked about the scenario so let's start the workshop so these are the instructions you have to follow to um, uh, to um, yeah complete the scenario i just talked about the first step is prerequisite Uh, which is uh, all about uh, having uh, having uh, an aws uh, uh, having an aws uh, account 
Um, and if you don't have AWS account, you might want to use this link to uh, create a free trial account. Next, we create a, a AWS S3 bucket. So as I mentioned earlier, the job file, the resources within the job files, they are all uh, stored into S3 buckets. So we are creating a Dozo uh, job folder here. Uh, you can create, uh, no, sorry, not folder, the bucket here. You can create bucket with any name. Uh, and then we are going to use this bucket to store the job file and, and the resources which job file is going to use. The next step is to uh, register the devices. Uh, so uh, now we need to register the device as a thing so that uh, this device can then, you know, uh, is, is, is uh, discoverable within AWS IoT Core and then a device and AWS IoT Core can talk to each other. So you go to AWS IoT console and then you, uh, yeah, before you create a device, in fact, you need to create a policy in terms of what this device can do. So you go to the uh, secure policies and then say, I want to create a policy. Uh, you give this policy a good name called a Dojo device policy. And then you're saying that, okay, I allow all type of actions on all type of resources. I mean, I'm giving this a very generic policy, uh, but you, if you want to restrict it, you want it to you know, able to talk on particular topics only, you can subscribe to particular topic only, publish to particular topics only, you can do that as well. But right now I kept it quite open uh, for this workshop. Uh, and then after that, uh, you create the policy. So the policy gets created. Then you go to the uh, manage uh, uh, menu and say, I want to create a new thing. I want to register a new thing. Uh, on the next screen, actually, you provide this uh, thing a name, and I'm giving this a name called Dojo Device uh, One. And after that, um, yeah, it will ask you to uh, create certificate for device because, as you know, that uh, uh, when you are using, doing MQTT based messaging, then you need uh, X509 client certificate in order to authenticate. So we are going to uh, generate uh, the certificate uh, certificate uh, uh, for the device. So we generate the certificate, uh, and then once we generate the certificate, we download all these certificates, okay? And when the certificates are uh, downloaded, uh, so basically certificate will have your private key, public key, your X509 certificate, okay? And of course your root CA. Uh, then you activate this certificate, okay? And, uh, and, and you download and uh, yeah, you, you download the certificate and you activate it. And after that, uh, it asks you to attach a policy to the device. And here we are attaching this Dojo device policy to the device. So with this, our uh, device uh, certification uh, registration is over. Now we, we open the device and we want to make note of uh, this uh, API endpoint, which is kind of a broker address or bro broker, uh, no, broker address for uh, your AWS IoT core, where uh, which um, device can publish the messages using uh, AWS uh, using uh, MQTT uh, messages. Okay, so you make note of this uh, uh, API endpoint because you are going to use this uh, letter when you try to um, uh, uh, publish to a topic or try to subscribe to a topic. Or basically, when you try to connect to AWS IoT Core. Next, we create a Cloud9 environment. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, that we are going to use a Cloud9 environment as a simulator uh, for the device. So for that purpose, we uh, create a Cloud9 environment and configure it for configure it with AWS IoT Device SDK so that we can use Python-based code to communicate with AWS IoT code. So we create a, a client, actually uh, so create an environment in the, in Cloud9. Uh, we give this environment a nice name called say Dojo environment. Uh, then we select a P2, uh, you know, P2, P2. Well, I'm selecting T3 Smile here, but uh, you know what? You can go for T2 Micro if you want. Okay, probably at that point of time, I selected that as a moment, but you can yeah, very well use the free tier version. Um, and uh, so free, yeah, free tier, uh, free tier of uh, the uh, T2 Micro. And then uh, we selected Ubuntu as the operating environment. Then we create uh, the environment. And once the environment has been created, we check the Python version over here to see if it is, uh, no, Python 3 is installed. Uh, we confirm that. Uh, and then um, since my device is going to actually download uh, some resources, so I'm going to use this request package for that purpose. Uh, so I'm going to install a request package uh, 
uh, on the in the environment so that I can use request package in my um, Python code. And then uh, we download uh, the AWS IoT device SDK for Python uh, from the uh, Git library from the GitHub. Yeah, so we simply uh, clone it, and once we clone it, uh, yeah, we uh, we uh, we go to that uh, folder uh, for the package, and then we simply uh, set up the package. So with this, uh, AWS IoT device SDK for Python is now deployed on uh, your uh, Cloud9 environment. So now your Cloud9 environment is ready to do any kind of Python programming you want to do with AWS IoT code, uh, you know, in order to connect and send messages or receive messages. Now, um, devices, uh, when using MQTT, uh, MQTT uh, messaging, they use uh, X509 certificate for authentications. Uh, which we created when we registered the, the device. Now we need to upload this certificate to the Cloud9 environment um, because uh, no, uh, the, the code in the Cloud9 environment has to use this certificate for the uh, authentication purpose. So we simply say, I want to upload a local file and, and we simply upload this uh, no, private, uh, private, uh, uh, private key, your X509 certificate, as well as your root CA certificate. So these three certificates we simply upload to the uh, upload to the uh, Cloud9 environment. Now my Cloud9 environment is ready uh, to actually communicate with AWS IoT Core because it has got certificate and as well as runtime environment uh, so that I can write my Python code uh, to talk to AWS IoT Core and device management. So next we go and create the code which AWS uh, which device is going to used to handle the job. Again, uh, as I mentioned earlier that uh, when the device pushes the job file to the device, device is actually responsible uh, for handling that job, uh, handling the job uh, file. So this is the code I'm going to write over here uh, to process the job file in order to uh, perform the task. Uh, and task is pretty simple, so let's go through the steps here. Actually, so first we uh, yeah create uh, an uh, MQTT client, then we uh, configure the endpoint. Remember the broker address, the REST endpoint address. We made note of when we register a device. You make note of that. Then you provide your root CA private key and X509 five X509 certificate file locations over here, and they say I am connecting here. So once you connect, actually, uh, let's skip this part for now, come over here. Then you're saying that uh, uh, I'm subscribing now. So now device is subscribing to this particular, this particular, uh, this particular uh, uh, topic. And as I discussed earlier that when you subscribe, when device subscribe to this particular topic, whenever a job gets submitted by device management, the device will come to know about it. And when it comes, so when when a message is published, when a job is published by the device management, the device will come to know about it because it has subscribed to this particular topic. And this is the function which is going to handle the job file. So let's see how this uh, job file look, uh, this um, handle look like. So here we go. Uh, so this handle job method is called. Uh, the first thing we do is that we need to download, we need to see the job configuration, okay? Because the job file is JSON file. So we need to see how does the JSON file look like. And we do that by saying, uh, okay, I want to JSON load, but uh, and, and that file is given in the payload attribute of the message. So from message payload, actually, I can get the JSON file, the job file. So I got my job file loaded now. Now I see if that job file has got one execution uh, node. If it has got an execution node, then okay, I know that this job file uh, is there for execution. And then I uh, first fetch out the job ID because remember, I have to send the status back. And in order to send the status back, I need to publish to this kind of topic. And here I need my job ID. So first we fetch the job ID. Then the business logic is that my job is going to have a config file, which I want to download. And that is available in this config file uh, node. So uh, we are simply you know, running this line of code to know the URL of the URL of the URL of the job uh, URL of the config file in the in the job. Okay. And then uh, what it's 
doing is that uh, once it what, what, once it has received the job ID, uh, the config file location, it simply sends a status back saying, you know what, uh, it is in progress. That means I have started processing the job now. So you can see here, it is publishing a message back to uh, this job status topic uh, saying that uh, status is in progress. Then it will simply use the request package to uh, make call to this file file URL. Uh, and then it will simply uh, get the content back uh, from that file, uh, which is simply writing to uh, a dojo config.txt file, a local file over here. So simply writing the content over here. So in this uh, example, the device business logic is that, um, the job business logic is that when uh, you get the file URL and simply download the content. So in this case, you can see that I'm making a request package call. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting the content back, which I'm then uh, you know, uh, writing it back to uh, a local uh, local file. And then uh, this was the job we perform. My job is done. Uh, so what we do is that we send it, the device, the client actually sends another uh, message, MQTT message saying that, you know what, the status is succeeded. That means I have successfully downloaded the file. So you can see uh, how you can uh, process your um, job file um, uh, uh, at the device end. Again, this was one example, uh, depending on the job file configuration, you might have uh, even simpler or more complex uh, business logic. And finally, your device disconnects and say, okay, I'm done. So this is the file you create. So you create a file uh, called joblistener.python, uh, which you, where you put uh, this, uh, this, uh, this code over here. So when this is done, actually your, 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 your device is ready because there's a code which can handle job. Now we need to uh, publish the job uh, from the device management so that a device can simply process it, okay? So let's create a job file. So before we can submit a job from the device management, we need to create a job file. And in this case, I'm creating a job file with the name dojojob.json. And it is a very simple file. I'm saying um, my version is 1.0 and my config location is um, yeah this one. Now here you see it is it becomes interesting. Uh, you can see here I'm saying that in my EU West one, which is uh, Ireland, I have a dojo job uh, bucket, which we created earlier. And there I'm going to keep a file, uh, a resource called dojo config.txt. So when this uh, job gets submitted and, and downloaded at the, at the device side, the, device, the, the, the job file will have this part, this part replaced by a pre-signed uh, uh, pre URL from S3. And all the device has to do is simply get this URL, download the content of, from the URL, uh, 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 no, and then you now write to the local file. And that's what you saw in the business logic over there. So we created, we first create this uh, dojo uh, job JSON file and upload this one uh, to the uh, upload this one to the uh, dojo job uh, bucket, and then. Uh, uh, and then we also create this dojo config.txt file because we said that, okay, we are sending this resource here. So we need to create a resource as well. So we create a dojo config.txt file as well. And this also we upload to dojo job uh, bucket. And this is a very simple file. We say, hey, dummy configuration for the workshop. So yeah, you can, yeah, I mean, in a, in a serious job update, probably you will put uh, some kind of executable pack, package here or uh, something some other meaningful configuration, but here for the workshop, I kept it very simple. Hey, it will have a single line of text saying dojo uh, dummy configuration for the workshop. Now, these two files, both uh, job file and the job resource files are now uploaded to dojo job. So now my job files are ready. Now I need to go to AWS IoT device management and simply submit this job. So going next, uh, you go to uh, your, um, um, uh, yeah, first you come to cloud nine environment. So before I submit the job, I need to run my job listener so that my device is ready uh, to listen for the new jobs getting submitted. So you simply go to your Dozo uh, uh, environment and you run Python uh, job listener .python file to start uh, running your uh, job listener files. So you can see here it's got connected. It's waiting for the job. So it has subscribed to the topic and now it's waiting for the uh, waiting for the message to come, waiting for the yeah, job to be submitted. 
So now my device is ready. It's listening for the new job. So we go to uh, AWS IoT Management Console again. And this time we go to Manage Jobs and say, I want to create a new job. Uh, now you can create many types of jobs. You can create jobs for uh, like uh, green grass or query otters. But in this case, uh, since my device is a kind of uh, yeah, an old device, I'm going to use a uh, like, uh, yeah, basic device. So I'm going to um, uh, use a custom job. So say I want to create a new custom job. Um, give this one a nice name, say Dojo Job 1 again. Uh, and then say, okay, what is your target device? So again, you can see here, I can select more than one uh, things over here, or I can select a thing group. But in, in my case, uh, like in this workshop, we have just one device to so say, okay, this job is for Dojo device one. And then say, okay, tell me the location of the job file. And in the earlier step, we have created the job file, Dojo job.json. So we simply uh, you know, provide this job file location. Uh, and so when you click on this, it, show, it, it tells you, okay, select the S3 bucket and then select the file inside the S3 bucket. And you simply select your, uh, no, uh, your job file location here. Uh, then uh, it says, um, uh, now in order, uh, when you're doing so actually, um, uh, as I mentioned that, uh, it, it recognizes that, uh, oh, there is a pre-signed URL in the job file. So it says, oh, okay, there is a configuration where my resource is also in the S3 bucket. That means the device management will, uh, will create a pre-signed URL for that resource in the S3 bucket. In order to do so, it needs a role which has permission to do so. And that's what we are doing here. So we simply go here and say, you know what, I want to create a new role. Yeah, it's as simple as that. So uh, I'm creating a new role and this role, this new role will provide uh, AWS IoT uh, device management uh, to, to be able to create a pre-signed URL for the resource inside my job file. Uh, and, uh, and now embed that into my uh, job file. So we create this Dojo IoT job uh, role. Okay, so we create this role and this role is created and get assigned to the uh, IoT device management. Uh, and then we select, okay, what, ty what type of job it is. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, you, uh, you, you say that um, this is, uh, um, yeah, you can see, sorry, I'm a little blobbing here. Let me clarify here. So yeah, so you say, you said, I want to pre-sign my URL uh, and have configured my job file. Uh, so you can see here that it has selected this URL. And I say that this URL will expire in five minutes. That means when the job file gets submitted, it will have a pre-signed URL, which device can use to access the resource. But that URL is available only for the five minutes. And of course, you can change it to make it uh, no, higher uh, if you want. And finally, you select the job type, whether it's a snapshot or continuous. In this case, we are saying it's a snapshot, uh, snapshot kind of job. Then you click on the next, and on the next screen, actually, you keep everything default and say, uh, you click on the create button. And when you do so, actually, your job gets submitted. And when the job gets submitted, actually, uh, the job gets posted to the device, and then device will use the code which you have written, written uh, in the job listener to uh, process the job file and do the update on the device. So if you stay on your console for, for some time, you will see that your status will move. So this your job, this is your job one status for this your device one will move from in progress to succeed. But it happens very fast. Um, if you want, you can put some kind of uh, yeah, sleep there if you really want to check it. But yeah, it happens very fast. And you can see that yeah, your device has uh, some uh, has uh, your, your device job has succeeded and, and job is marked as uh, completed. Now, if you go back to your Dojo environment, uh, you will see that your uh, code has run actually, and it has processed your job. And the proof is that you will have this Dojo config.txt file, which was not earlier there. Now this file has been created on your device because the business logic inside the code was to simply access the resource and write it back on the local, uh, local machine or, or local device. Uh, so you can see that uh, uh, my job listener has worked and it has created this dojo config.txt uh, file. And, and that's all. And, 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 and then uh, you can see that how you were able to submit the job and how device was uh, able to process the job using the Python-based uh, Python -based code. Now, next step is to go and clean up the resources so that you don't uh, incur any cost 
host this uh, workshop. So that was all about the workshop, uh, which shows how to handle job um, in AWS IoT. Um, hope you like this uh, video and workshop. If yes, please click on the like button. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, there are many other similar uh, workshops and exercises uh, which you can use to learn about AWS uh, services. Uh, I strongly recommend to use those workshop and exercises uh, to implement a specific scenario and have a practical experience of working with AWS services. We always look forward to your feedback and comments. If you have any feedback or comments, you can either provide us in the uh, comment section in the YouTube channel, or you can also click on this contact us tab here and can provide feedback there as well. We always look forward to your feedback uh, for the new content or for improving the content. So that is all for uh, today, guys. I promise to come back with another such workshop and video in the coming days. Uh, meanwhile, stay safe and have a nice day. Bye-bye.